Hey everyone, it's Marla. Welcome back to another video going along with my blog posts over at my website, which is in jesusname.net. I hope you'll go on over there and subscribe for free. And if you do so, you will get these videos and blog posts right to your email inbox. And like I said, for free. And um, what you're gonna find is we are going through the Bible cover to cover. And you're joining us right in the second half of the book of Numbers. In fact, at the end of this week we'll be finishing up the book of Numbers and so I want to bring you a teaching which comes from the second half of the book of Numbers in chapter 21 and uh, in this chapter we're going to see a very interesting little thing happen as we've been studying you've probably noticed that there's all kinds of symbolism in the Bible all kinds of things that represent things we've seen bread representing Jesus we've seen oil representing the Holy Spirit we've seen the lamb as the sacrifice for representing Jesus, we've seen gold representing God, we've seen leaven representing sin, we've seen all kinds of things. But one thing um, that is you know, pretty much known to everybody is that a serpent would represent Satan. Well, there's one time in the Bible, at least one time that I know of, where a serpent actually represents Christ. And it comes up right here in the book of Numbers. And it's actually referred to in the New Testament in the book of John. And it might be a passage that just has always had you perplexed because it seems so odd. It's in John 3, 14 um, and 15. And you're going to see these verses being spoken by Jesus directly after he's speaking to a Pharisee named Nicodemus. And he's telling Nicodemus that he must be born again to enter the kingdom of heaven. And then he says, and I'll paraphrase in John 3, 14 and 15, Just like Moses raised up a ser serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be raised up so that all that see him and believe will have eternal life. And so we see that in the New Testament, this reference to just like Moses rep, uh, raised up a serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man, Jesus, be raised up. And that reference is right back to these verses in the book of Numbers, in Numbers 21. What we're going to see is a little story in there that talks about how the Israelites are going through the wilderness, and once again, they they start complaining. They start complaining that there's no water, uh, no food, which is not true. There is food, it's just manna. And then they sort of backpedal on themselves and they say, well, this worthless food. But they're complaining and they're just saying, why in the world, you know, Moses, did you bring us out of Egypt just to die in the wilderness? We don't have any provision, which is not true at all. And I will tell you that this is probably the umpteenth time that the Israelites have done this. And so at this, in this instance, God doesn't even bother to say, I'm, I'm done with Israel, as he's done many times before we've seen. In this instance, what happens is God sends fiery serpents, which start biting the people of Israel, and they begin to die. After this happens, the people of Israel actually repent. And they say, Moses, please pray for us. We've done wrong. Basically, that's what repenting is. Pray for us and um, have it so that the Lord would stop the, these serpents from biting us. And what God says for Moses to do is to make a fiery serpent and place it on a pole and raise it up. And those people who have been bitten, if they look at the serpent on the pole, they will be healed. And so in this little story, we see a very interesting fact, again, pointed to in the New Testament, that Christ is represented as a serpent on this pole. And of course, we have serpents, which are still evil, biting people, and they are representing Satan, who has infected everybody with sin. <laughs> and so we have serpents representing Christ and representing Satan in the same story. And I want to point out to you how this story is so amazing and why Jesus himself rep, um, spoke about it in the New Testament. Because you'll see the cross and everything that it symbolizes in this little story. First thing is, this cure, this remedy was free. The people had to do nothing to earn it. They didn't have to make the serpent, which was a bronze serpent, by the way, and that's what Moses does. He casts a bronze serpent and puts it on a pole. And bronze, as we have studied, always 
always points to judgment. So here's the, 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 the bronze serpent judging the people for their sin. But it's free. They didn't make the serpent. They didn't hold the serpent up. They didn't have to rub any ointment on them. They didn't have to pay for the serpent. They didn't have to do anything. It's a free gift. So that's how this remedy points to the cross, which is a free gift to us. We don't have to do anything to obtain the salvation that comes through the free gift of Jesus being sacrificed on the cross for us for our sin. The second bit to see is that this there is this is a universal cure. There's a universal need. Everybody who got bitten needs this one cure. So everybody who's been poisoned by the snake needs this one cure. That is the same for us. Everybody on this planet has been poisoned by sin. And there is one cure, and that cure is Jesus. The Bible states clearly that all have sinned. Everybody has fallen short of the glory of God. And so there is not one person that is S-I-N negative on this planet. And in this instance, there were many, many people who have been bitten and poisoned by this serpent. And so this is a universal need by all people on earth. Everybody needs salvation through the one cure, and that is Jesus. The next thing that we can see this representing is this is all done by God's grace. God didn't need to do this. The Israelites were wrong. God was providing water and food for them and protection for them as they were going through the wilderness. God rescued them out of slavery in Egypt. They were absolutely wrong. They repented, and so God says by his grace, he's going to give this cure. Grace means unmerited favor, not deserved, but given anyway. That's what Jesus was for us too. This was uh, given by God's grace. Jesus walked to the cross knowingly, willingly, doing it by grace alone. We didn't deserve it. We all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Every one of us in word, in deed, in thought have, have, have been sinful, not perfect. That's what sin means. We're just falling short. We're not perfect. And so it's grace alone that gave this cure to the people in the wilderness, and it's grace alone that gives Jesus to us on the cross. And the next way that this is representative of Christ on the cross is that this healing is available to everybody. Whether they were young, old, short, big, small, Egyptian, Jewish, didn't matter what color skin, this healing of the serpent on the cross, all they had to do is look at it and they would be healed. Again, no work on their own, but available to all. That's what Christ is to everybody on this planet. Everybody is welcome into the family of God. Everybody is welcome to believe in Christ as their savior and with that, they will be saved. Many people think, oh, this is such an inclusive um, type of a, a, a thing, Christianity, and it's so exclusive. Well, it's not exclusive. Jesus died for everybody, just like this serpent was held up for everybody. And so being a Christian, following Christ, having your sins washed away, being saved by Jesus is available to every single person on the planet. That is what his death on the cross did it removed sin from everybody and then the one last thing that we're going to talk about is there's one remedy for all this is the one cure the serpent on the pole other people didn't have to drink you know some type of liquid other people didn't have to use some kind of of, of bomb one remedy for everybody for this poison that is the same thing as jesus on the cross there is one remedy for the curse of sin that Adam and Eve brought on humanity. One remedy. There are many, many other religions, faiths, belief systems out there, but God is very, very clear as he was to Nicodemus. You must be born again to enter the kingdom of heaven. Jesus said that. And so same thing here. One remedy cures the poison of the, the toxins of the snake bite, and one remedy will, will cure the sin problem that you have, and it is by faith. 
there, there's just one thing you have to do and believe that the work has been done for you. Salvation comes through faith in the one remedy and his name is Jesus. And so simple belief in what Jesus did on the cross, repentance like the people of Israel did. We, we were wrong, we did wrong. Repenting and just saying, God, I've been wrong. I've been rebelling from you. I've been turning from you. I've been doing my own thing. I've been, I've been angry at you. Just, just cry out from your heart and just apologize and just say, I want to follow you, Jesus. I believe in what you did on the cross for me, that your blood atones for my sin so that I can be saved and be in the kingdom of heaven forever. And you will be born again. You will have eternal life according to Jesus. The very next verse that we see Jesus saying in the Bible after he speaks to, to Nicodemus about Moses lifting up the serpent is John 3:16, verses that everybody knows. So, uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that all that would believe in him would have eternal life. And so, there you have it. It's a, it's a beautiful teaching right from the Old Testament that points right to the cross of Jesus. And so I hope that clears it up for you when you come across those passages in John. And I hope when you read the book of Numbers, it just excites you to know that Jesus Christ is on every single page. It's all pointing to the cross and it's all pointing to our Savior. So thank you again for, for joining me, for watching. I hope you will uh, join at the website, injesusname.net. We will have new videos 